puberty is a precarious period in life where the subject undergoing such process reacts to every situation from small occurrences to interacting with other individuals in a sensitive manner. Such period is also a precarious one for the caregiver, as with the proper guidance, the subject can bloom into the best version of themselves, but if left without proper care, can result in the subject growing up to become an emotionless mess with trust issues. And who else is the perfect embodiment of the latter than a young orphan girl who under the care of an old hack? <laughs> culminated in this girl's emotional state that makes a half-cyborg look like a shonen protagonist. If you've seen my previous video of Freerin, she was a welcome surprise as the improvements that Bandai implemented enhanced the quality of the figure to Figma standards. So I had high hopes for the upcoming releases of Freerin's Apprentice. But come and behold, we've got your run-of-the-mill SH Figarts figure. Firstly, looking at the head, just by the front side, like Freerin, is beautifully sculpted with the hair covering the forehead and even reaching down to her tits. And the rear of the head is also beautifully sculpted with the individual wrinkles organically embedded. And the hairpiece that was given to Fern by her mentor is the cherry on top, as not only the butterfly shaped engraving is well portrayed, but the metallic grey finish is organically painted. But that's where the good part ends, as by moving down, unlike the hair seen by the likes of Freeran or Okita Soji Altar, where the sculptors gave their heart and soul into rendering their individual hair pieces, the sculptors when depicting Fern seems to have not received their annual bonuses as the hair here is a singular piece attached by a single joint. That not only makes Fern's long hair akin to that of a helmet, but also say goodbye to hair poseability as the various poses with Fern's dynamic hair is only a wet dream that was never meant to be with this figure. But the highlight regarding the head is the face as Fern, due to her harsh and emotionless upbringing, retains a semi-emotionless expression which, unlike the hair, is faithfully depicted as shown through the big purple eyes that while accurate, emits this glossy glow unlike those seen in Freerin or Figma figures that makes the overall eyes somewhat inorganic, the sharp anime nose, the large and spacious cheeks, and a small and simple smile that gives off the illusion that Fern is an innocent and well-mannered girl. But if you want Fern's true self shown for the whole world to see, there is the typical monotone face that Fern is usually seen with, that with the dull and hopeless pupils and a single line mouth makes it difficult for opponents, humans or non-humans alike, to decipher Fern's intentions and a nightmare to her mentor. But if the Monto face isn't enough Fern for you, there is this pouting face that is usually seen when Fern is pissed and just like the teenage girl she is, expresses her feelings through pouting. And Bandai seems to have successfully replicated said face as the crossed eyebrows, anger filled pupils, the bloated cheeks, and the unique mouth when placed on Fern, makes anybody with the right mind want to make fun of her. But if Fern is forced to do something that she isn't too fond of, or filled with fear, there is this pity face that, with the crossed eyebrows, eyes that are only about 50% open, making it perfect when Fern, just like her tsundere self, sees what Vader has become. Moving beyond the face, Fern, unlike Freerin with the vibrantly colored and drip-filled outfit, possesses a rudimentary pair consisted of a white medieval-style dress with a simple black robe on top, more or less resembling Gandalf in his hobo years. And looking closely, the black robe is composed out of the soft rubber-like plastic. This is in addition to the various wrinkles in place that add to Fern's more weathered and worn-out look. The white dress beneath also retains the same characteristics with the simplistic and utilitarian design, the rubber-like texture, and the addition of wrinkles. But unlike Freerin, tries to highlight her physique, 
Fern's outfit does the opposite in which all the traits are hidden for the sake of a utilitarian standpoint, but it doesn't mean they succeed in concealing her guns. But a downside regarding the use of the soft plastic is that while flexible compared to your typical hard plastic, it's still limited by the form it takes and thus limits additional movement when compared to the plastic that are separated, or your cloth-based clothing, something the Bandai already knew and implemented in other figure arts. But if you're curious on Fern's leg wear, by lifting the dress up, you can clearly see that Fern wears a tight grey leggings that highlights Fern's thin thighs, contrary to her ballistics. This is in addition to the pair of Wellington boots that just like Freeman are more or less simple in design, a far cry to those seen in Star Wars figures. When looking at what Fern is accompanied by, just like Freeran, Bandai decided to arm Fern with a full squad's worth. Besides the faces, Fern is also accompanied by a various assortment of hands. Besides the out-of-the-box fists, there are your open hands, open palm hands used to touch others' cheeks, a pointy hand to poke fun at disabled people on life support, and these two unique hands that are used to wield Fern's staff. Talking about a staff, there is Fern's signature staff and acts as her main armament against both humans and demons alike. And while Freeran's staff was good regarding details, Fern seems to be a step up, as while the design may be the poor man's weapon, the rendition is on another level as portrayed through the wood retaining the individual lines that differ from one another and even the age lines on top. Then there are the purple wrappings placed throughout the staff that are organically placed and the metallic parts are also situated throughout. That possesses the beautiful gunmetal paint job and embedded with some impressive engravings, making for a magical weapon that holds great power and makes Fern a true force to be reckoned with. But a magical staff will be useless if it isn't able to pull off some magical spells, in which Fern is accompanied by her signature defense spell effect which, this time around, just like Freeran, is well sculpted and accurately depicts what came out in the anime. Such traits are portrayed through the honeycomb-esque transparent shape that acts to defend Firm from offensive magic, but such effect is held through the two separate pieces that by attaching them, and then the defense spell, succeed in recreating when Fern is defending herself from little boogeymen to Sith Lords. And if you think you're experiencing deja vu, it's because you are. But maybe the most precious item to Fern might be this bracelet that she received for her 16th birthday. And look at the bracelet, just like the headwear, it's beautifully sculpted with a simple and clean design, alongside the flower markings situated at the center. And the silver finish just adds an additional layer of authenticity to the bracelet, making for a truly special item that Fern holds dear. As firm being a 16 year old, you don't expect her to reach the heights to those of your Caucasian males or disabled on life support. And you're right! As Fern stands at about 14 centimeters or 5.5 inches, which makes her more or less similar to that of your typical anime waifu. Here's Fern next to Gumpla, the horny and broken Figma figures, Kaiju figures, and her mentor, Free Ren. Now, if you've seen my previous SH Figures figures, they were the prominent examples of articulated figures due to the numerous joints being implemented to reenact various poses. And with Freerin being a top-notch figure, I expected Fern to follow in her mentor's footsteps. So when looking at Fern's range of posability, the head can look down, but when moving up, it's limited due to her long hair. And while side-to-side -side movement is stiff, it can still move at a wide range. The hairpiece can move front and back. Shoulder lift due to the design of the rope is limited. A bicep movement. Elbows can bend over 90 degrees. Round the mill hand movement. And as both outfits being composed of the rubber like plastic which limits movement, body movement is more or less non existent. But with the right angles, leg spread is superb. Knees can bend over 90 degrees, limited feet movement, and a toe bend. So when looking at Fern's range of posability, 
So, to sum up, the SH Figure's iteration of Fen is a figure that has its strong points but also its drawbacks as, just like the previously released SH Figure's free run, Fern retains the similar advantages such as the immaculate sculpt, great paint job, and various assortment of accessories. But such praises are plagued by the cons such as the questionable application of materials, laziness regarding certain parts of the body, and the more or less non-existence regarding articulation that deducts the overall grade that Fern initially achieved. In doing so, I would only recommend this figure to either a particular category of people who have a fetish for the 16 year olds or want to complete the figure arts line that started with free rent. With that said, I'm gonna give the SH figure iteration of fun a ranking of a B.